So let's actually look at how threads are created, how they run on um, um, a Unix based platform, in this case on my laptop, and then we'll get a feel for how threads work. Right. So um, let's actually look at um, our, our sort of like example file um, for threads. And um, once again, uh, these are examples from um, Renzi and Andrea Arpachi Research, uh, three easy pieces. Um, so um, here in this program, what we're doing is well, we're going to use a library called pthreads to do to spawn threads and to do work, right? So um, um, pthreads is, is sort of like a very um, popular library for, for doing that. So um, in this case, um, what we're going to do is, is we have um, a bunch of threads. And then so for each thread, we, we need to sort of like save the state of a thread somewhere, right? And um, so uh, in this particular case, this struct uh, p thread underscore t is, is what um, captures the essence of a thread. So for every thread that we want to create, we have a p thread underscore t struct, right? So um, so we in in, a, in we could for example have like up to like a hundred um, uh, threads in this example, and what we're doing is um, in a loop um, we are printing um, the um, the ID of that of that loop number to uh, a buffer, and then we are creating a thread. So p thread underscore create is what you use to you create a thread, um, and then we are we are supplying it the the particular um, struct that we want to use. And you know every thread has to have a unique struct, and um, we're going to say that like you know we're we're going to run uh, my thread, uh, which is a function that we define. So when the thread is created, it will run my thread, and um, the the argument for my thread is going to be this this particular buffer that we have created, right? So hopefully you're all with me so far, right? And um, if you go look at my thread, um, all it really does is it, it loops around for a little bit, right? Um, and after that, I mean, just like you know, passing time. And after that, it prints whatever argument we give it, and then it returns null. So that, that's all it does. And um, so, so that's about creating the thread. And then what we do is in the main thread, which is like in the main program that we have, we wait for the thread to finish. So we created ten threads. So we wait for all threads to finish, and then we say we're done, right? So that that's really the program that we wrote. So let's actually see this in action. Right, so I think we already compiled it, and then we're going to execute to zero, right? So um, we have main begin, and then we have all of the threads running, and then each thread that runs then prints out the ID of the loop. Um, so you know, like first we have like loop zero, loop one, loop two, and so on and so forth, and then it prints it. And then at the end we have main end, right? So what is really interesting here is that we already see that they're not printing in order. So we're creating these threads in order, but remember that it is the operating system um, that will schedule these threads. And um, the OS has complete freedom in how it wants to schedule these things, right? So in this particular case, what has happened is that um, thread one has been scheduled before thread zero. So we see that um, one has been printed on the screen before zero, although all the other uh, threads have, for some reason, um, been executing in order. Right, and so every time you execute it, like you get a different order, right? So last time we got um, one zero two, we got two one zero, and, and so on and so forth, right? So um, this is called concurrency, right? So in the um, demos that we previously saw, um, we all, we had like deterministic programs, right? Your program would start at some instruction, it would go linearly, and then it would finish at some other instruction. You could have jumps because of functions and so on, but it's a very linear sequence of events. Now, in this case, um, what is going on is that you have multiple threads being created, with each with their own instruction pointer, their stack, and the registers, and so on. So these are all independent units, right? And right now, they're not synchronized. You're not telling these things to run in a certain way. So the OS has like complete freedom in how it can schedule these things. And so because of this, um, what it does is like in this case, it's scheduled like two first, and after that, it's scheduled one, after that, zero. This time, it's scheduled one, zero, two, and so on, right? So um, if, if, if we define um, correct behavior as, you know, like 0, 1, 2 already always prints out in that order, this program is incorrect. And the reason for the incorrect behavior is, is what's called a data race. So all of the different threads are racing to print to the screen at the same time, 
right? So you have thread one, uh, thread zero, thread two, and every time we execute, we see that a different thread wins. So in this case, like one uh, thread, uh, thread one uh, printed first, in this case, thread two printed first and so on. So this is called a data race. Um, between different processes and it's in this, it's an example of what we call a concurrency problem Concurrency is the fact that we have multiple things running at the same time uh, They're concurrent they're running at the same time and a concurrency problem occurs because Well, they're running at the same time and we would like them to do something in a certain order or we would like them to be synchronized in a certain way and they're not and um, uh, concurrency problems and how to solve them is a giant area of research. And um, uh, even though operating systems have been around for some time, um, this is an area that's still being very actively um, researched upon. So um, even in like you know the last uh, SSP and OSDI, we had papers which sort of like related to um, concurrency problems. Um, so um, long story short, like you know, like when you have threads, you you get the benefit that you know, like um, these things occur at the same time. Um, you're able to, uh, like you know, if you if you wanted to check some two files, as in our example, if you use two threads, it could get done in half the amount of time. So that's that's the benefit. Um, the challenge is that you have to somehow um, you know, like. Uh, uh, make these threads behave um, to synchronize so that like you get the result you want, right? And so um, that was like an introduction to threads, um, how they run and the concurrency problems they bring with them. So let's actually look at a different uh, program, which is sort of a slight modification of this, right? So remember um, how I said that um, every thread can access um, um, the memory of the process, right? So every thread does not have its own individual memory. So this is actually the main difference between a thread and a process, right? When you fork the child process, the child process gets its own copy of the memory of the process. So if you had variable one, um, uh, sorry, variable x, which is one in the parent, it would be one in the child. But if the child changes it to two, it's not gonna change in the parent. It's, they're different copies. Um, with a thread, there's only one copy. So if one thread changes to two, the other thread can see that X has changed to two. So they're operating on the same copy. So in this particular program, we have a, a, um, um, a value counter um, that, that we are, um, it's a shared global variable. So both threads can, can see this. Um, sort of like nuanced point here to note is that every thread has its own stack. This is how they're able to execute different functions. And so um, what is on the stack is not shared. So if we had defined counter inside, let's say my thread, uh, it would be different copies for each, each um, thread. Because it's a global um, uh, uh, variable on the heap, both see the same copy, right? So then we have um, our my thread um, function. And then here, what we're doing is, um, basically we are incrementing our counter. Right, so um, the counter starts out at zero, and then uh, until a certain max value, we are going to increment counter by one. So, if max was ten, counter would be incremented by ten, right? And at the end, we print, um, you know, like the um, uh, the letter that we had, um, right? So, um, uh, so for example, we could give each process a name, for example, A and B and so on, and so this would say like you know A done and so on, right? Um, but each pro each thread is going to actually like you know increment this counter by one. And um, in our in our um, uh, main, what we're going to do is we're going to get some arguments from the um, uh, command line argument, and it's going to be just the maximum amount of time we want to loop this counter. Like how many times do you want to increment this counter? We're going to have two threads, right? And then um, the, the counter is going to start at value zero. We're going to create each thread. We're going to call them A and B, and each thread is going to increment this counter, right? So, for example, we ask the threads to increment um, the threads by ten. Um, what you might expect is that um, it would be zero at the start. Then, when A finishes, it would be like ten, and when B finishes, it would be twenty. And so, that's really the expected value, right? So, let's just see what happens. Um, then we are making T one, um, and so let's actually say, yeah, like let's say. 1000 is, is, is what we want to do, right? So um, so when we, when, we when we run this, right? So initially there's a main value, sorry, there's a main value. Um, and then it says the counter is like um, uh, zero, right? And then uh, B begins and then A begins, right? And they have um, different um, values of Y. They have different stacks as, as I told you before. 
and then they finish and then in, in main we are once again checking like what is the counter value right so zero at the start each thread is going to increment it by a thousand and then at the end it's two thousand this is this is what you would expect right um, this this only happens because the value is so small that it gets over pretty quickly so let's actually add two more zeros so now we are incrementing it by let's actually do it by a million right um, easy number to remember so we wanted to loop a million times so the end result should be two million at the end but this time um, what we see is that it's not right so it should have been two million at the end but it's some random value which is less than less two million right um, so what's going on the important um, thing to remember is that um, both threads are operating on the same counter value. They don't have different counter values, so they both have the same counter value. And um, there's nothing uh, stopping thread one from overwriting what thread two did, right? So they may, they may both have started at like, you know, like um, value zero, thread one increments it to one, thread two increments it to two. Actually, let me sort of like um, illustrate this on the iPad and then it will be sort of like um, clearer as to what's going on, right? So our counter value is at zero at the start and then we have two threads. We have T1 and then we have T2, right? Remember um, that these threads are going to be accessing the same value. Right. So now initially, um, when we did um, the sort of like loop value to be a thousand, what effectively happened was um, T1 ran, and then it incremented it from zero to thousand. And then T2 ran, and then it saw that the initial value was thousand, it incremented it to two thousand. And then finally, um, we saw two thousand. So this is what happened when we ran it for a thousand value, right? Now, um, when we ran it for like a larger value, what happens is that the threads gets context switched. It, it can't finish all the work in a sort of like single unit of work, right? So let's say um, thread one increments it from like, you know, zero to um, let's say 10,000, right? Now thread uh, two, when it starts, it sees 10,000 as the value, and then it increments it to say 20,000. Right. The problem here is that this thread again will not read the value of 10,000 again. Right. So um, it's not going to be always looking at, at memory to see what value it gets. So because of that, um, what happens is that it sees um, uh, it sees its old value 10,000, and then it increments it again to 20,000. Right. So both threads did uh, the same operations, they incremented it from 10,000 to 20,000. So the result was 10,000 increments are lost. Uh, it should have been 30,000 at the end of the sequence, but it's only 20,000. Because uh, thread one stomped all over what thread two did. Remember, they're both accessing the same counter. Um, they're not synchronizing in any way. So uh, thread one overwrites basically what thread two did, right? So this is what is called a synchronization problem, right? We want our updates to be what we call atomic. Uh, so only one person um, increments um, uh, the counter at a time and then the value is not lost. However, that is not actually what, what happens because like there's no synchronization going on. So they just stomp all over each other. So this is another example of a concurrency um, bug. And then um, in the next segment, we're going to look at like how we actually um, how how what what are sort of like the um, um, some primitives that are used to to um, uh, to have atomic operation?